So let's begin with understanding the definition, diagnosis and screening for pre-diabetes. What are the numbers? What are the recommendations? So how do you really define pre-diabetes? Well, pre-diabetes is a term which is used for individuals whose glucose levels do not meet the criteria for diabetes but are too high to be considered normal. It is characterized by the presence of IFG or impaired fasting glucose and or IGT which is impaired glucose tolerance and or an HbA1c which lies between 5.7 to 6.4 percent. Pre-diabetes is not a distinct clinical entity but a state that predisposes the patient towards increased cardiovascular risk and of course the risk of progression from pre-diabetes to frank diabetes. Now let's really look at the means of diagnosing pre-diabetes. The ADA standards of medical care in diabetes gives us the recommendations that you can diagnose pre-diabetes if an individual has their fasting plasma glucose between 100 to 125 milligram percent and or the 2 hours post uh, 2 hours plasma glucose after a 75 grams OGTT and oral glucose tolerance test lies between 140 to 199 milligram percent and or an HbA1c as I mentioned earlier lying between 5.7 to 6.4 percent. As we said these are the numbers which are not in the diabetes range but not in the normal range as well. So if the HbA1c crosses 6.5 then it's diabetes. If the 2 hours postprandial or post glucose uh, uh, levels cross 200 then it's again diabetes. So these are the specific numbers which lie in that gray zone where they are not normal but not frank diabetes and they are relevant because pre-diabetes or these numbers itself predispose an individual to higher cardiovascular risk. Now let's look at what's the recommendation for screening in asymptomatic adults. So adults who are overweight or in, are obese with a BMI of more than or equal to 25 uh, or in Asians it's 23, they have one or more of the following risk factors which is they may have a first degree relative with diabetes, they have a high risk race or ethnicity example the African Americans, the Latinos, the Native Americans, the Asian American, the Pacific Islander or even Asians in general. They have history of cardiovascular disease, they have hypertension which is more than 140 by 90 millimeters of mercury uh, or are on therapy for hypertension. Those who have an HDL cholesterol level less than 35 and or a triglyceride level of more than 250 milligram person. Women with polycystic ovarian syndrome, those who are physically inactive or they may have other clinical conditions like uh, ones associated with insulin resistance like severe obesity or, or markers of insulin resistance like the hyperpigmented skin which is acanthosis nigricans. Patients with pre-diabetes, those who have A1c is, is more than 5.7 percent or those who have already impaired glucose tolerance or IFG, they should be tested yearly to see whether they are normalizing or progressing towards diabetes. Women who were diagnosed with gestational diabetes earlier should also have lifelong testing at every three years frequency. For all other patients, the testing should begin at the age of 45 years. So if there are these risk factors which I mentioned, then they should be screened earlier. But if they do not have these risk factors or they do not belong to such a race or do not have hypertension, etc., then at 45 years is when we should ideally be screening our population. If results are normal, testing should be re repeated at an interval, regular interval of 3 years with consideration for more frequent testing depending on the initial risk results and the risk status. And of course, those individuals with HIV should also be tested regularly for the presence or onset of diabetes and pre-diabetes. What about the recommendation for screening in children and adolescents? So in asymptomatic children and adolescents who have overweight or obesity, that means more than 85th percentile for the normal uh, weight uh, profiles, uh, if they are more than 85th percentile, they would be considered overweight. 
if they are more than the 95th percentile for their matching age criteria, it would be considered as obese or who have one or the more other additional risk factors based on the strength of their association with diabetes. These children or the ones who have maternal history of diabetes or gestational diabetes during the child's gestation are the ones where the screening should be done earlier. So, these are specific recommendations for screening in children and adolescents. Those with a family history of type 2 diabetes in a first or secondary relative and that would mean a lot of individuals. Again, the ones with higher um, incidence in their race and ethnicity, Americans, uh, Asians, African Americans, Latinos and so on. Those who have, those children and adolescents today who may have signs of insulin resistance or conditions associated with insulin resistance and I repeat acanthosis nigricans, presence of hypertension, dyslipidemia, those uh, younger girls and females and adolescents with polycystic ovarian syndrome or those who have had an history of being small for gestational age birth weight. So, who were uh, considered kind of premature or smaller birth weight are again all the individuals who are predisposed to higher risk of developing pre-diabetes and diabetes and these are the ones where you should be screening them. It is not unusual for us today to come across children especially above 15 years of age and adolescents as we say to be diagnosed with young onset type 2 diabetes. The incidence and prevalence unfortunately is on the rise and hence the need for early screening so you can do more with terms of education, lifestyle change and medications of course were required to, to treat our, our younger individuals with metabolic syndrome so they do not land up with complications in, in a few years after being diagnosed because we had missed out on that much period of, of uh, missed opportunities and missed diagnostic period.